Databases, they freaked me out as well in the beginning, if I'm being honest, but they are the most important part in my opinion, and actually kind of one of the more fun parts when you're building a bubble app. Configuring your database at the start of a project is a must do. It's the way that you're gonna figure out the overall structure of your app and build a foundation. So the way I like to think about a database is that you're really populating the world, right? The universe that is your application. You're deciding what are the things that are gonna exist in the world, right? You're playing God. What are the animals? What are the rocks? You know, what are the plants? All of the different categories of things, that's what you're doing. And when you have that foundation done, right, then you can invite invite your users into that world and they can play in the world that you've created. So um, when you're configuring a database, there's really two questions to keep in mind. The first one is what are the things, right? Or the objects, as you might sometimes hear them called, that exist, right? I'm playing God, this is the world that I'm creating, right? What are the things in that world? And the second one is what are the relationships between these things? Because of course, the things that we're gonna define in our database, they don't exist in a vacuum, right? In the case of Amazon, you have a user and you know they're gonna do stuff in that application, right? They're gonna interact with TVs and basketballs and whatever else they might buy, credit cards that they're gonna purchase stuff with. So things don't exist in a vacuum. So let's focus on this first question for now though. What are the things or the objects that exist? It sort of hides a sub question, which is defining what is an object, right? Or a thing. Okay, in bubble we call these things, but in sort of like the wider programming world, we might call these objects. So what is an object or a thing versus an attribute, right? If we look in our bubble database, we have this user data type. Okay, so we've got a user that's gonna exist more or less in every single app and you notice that it has this email field here, okay? So that email field isn't a thing unto itself, right? There is sort of nonsensical to have an email independent of a user, just like it's nonsensical to have sort of like a screen size independent of a TV or a color, like a color red outside of a wall or a house or a door or whatever, okay? So you've got to be able to distinguish between what are things and what are attributes. So in the case of our user, right, we've got this email field. If we look at Amazon again, right, we've got a range of different products here. They're all TVs. So should we have a TV data type or should we have a, a product, right? Like what's the higher level category? And the way I like to think about this is, is literally that way. Like what is the highest level category that's relevant for our application? In the case of Amazon, all products are gonna be treated the same way, right? Like there isn't a product that has some kind of special status that isn't going to be added to a cart and paid for and delivered. They're all, they're all the same in essence, but underneath products, okay, you have sort of different types of products. Just like if we were playing God to use that title metaphor again, if I'm creating animals in my world, like there's a huge variety of different animals. There's different categories of animals, right? I've got mammals, reptiles, I've got fish, right? I'm not using the scientific names here, obviously, but it's the same concept when you're talking about defining the things that exist in your database. So what I would actually do, is I would have a product thing, okay? And then I would have something like a category field, okay? And that might be a TV, okay? And that might be sort of sports equipment, okay? And you can you know, obviously get a lot more granular here. And I might have a name field, 
okay, which is gonna correspond to like the actual name of the TV, like this TCL 32 inch, blah, blah, blah. So that's the idea between distinguishing between attributes and things. So let's keep going through here. Let's say I'm gonna purchase this TV and it looks like I've already added it to my cart. Okay, so it looks like we're creating a relationship here. Okay, like this TV is being added to my cart as a user. Okay, so two ways we might go about this. Okay, we might have a field on this user, right, called a cart and that might be a list of products, let's say, right? Like this just like this can just be populated by, you know, products left, right, and center. Here's another product, right? And that goes into this cart, okay? So that's one way that we could create this relationship between a user's items or products that they've added to their cart and the products themselves. But there's another way that we could do this and that's actually to have a separate cart thing Whereas, which is actually where we're going to send these products into. Now, why would you have one rather than the other? This is kind of another problem related to when to define attributes or fields versus when to define an entirely new object to capture some kind of information. And the way I like to think about it is, is there any other information about this thing, right? And in this context, we're talking about a cart. Is there any other information about a cart that we might like to capture apart from the products that are in it, right? Is there, does it have more than one attribute? I think there's a good argument to be made that in this case, that it does, okay? Because as well as obviously the products that are gonna exist inside of that cart, I think that we also wanna keep track of when this cart was created, okay? So the created date, okay? We might also wanna keep track of like the related payment. That's an object that we don't have yet in our database, but I can, if I'm thinking through this, you know, at some point I'm gonna go and I'm gonna check out and you know, there's gonna be like a charge associated with that. So like there might be like a payment amount here. I think that, you know, as we go about building our database, and this is gonna, you know, be the same situation that you run into, is you're going to discover that there's more information that you might wanna capture about the behavior, the actions that your user are taking. And while we might not be able to think of them all right now, I think that a cart, because it's such a central part of the experience of buying objects within the Amazon website, is there's a good argument to be made that creating a separate cart thing in our database is gonna give us a lot more flexibility later on. So I wanna create that as a separate cart object. Now if I'm gonna proceed to my checkout. Right, so the next step in the checkout process is to select a shipping address, okay? So this is again, I think a scenario where we wanna create a separate thing or a separate object because like there's multiple addresses that a user can have. An address has at least two, two fields. Okay, if we've got this address here, an address has first and foremost, like the address itself. Okay, which in Bubble, you have this data type thing called a geographic address, which we can use for this address. We also probably wanna track whether it is like the primary address or like the default address, which might be a yes or a no field, right? A Boolean type field. Okay, so there's at least two things that we're gonna track here. So definitely we wanna have a separate address and coming back to this, what are the relationships between these things question, okay? It's quite obvious, I think, that an address is only useful in the context of a particular user, okay? So we might have, my paper is getting a little bit uh, crowded here. We might have a list of addresses, right? That's a list. Okay, and that's going to point to, you know, all of the various addresses that we might have in our database. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there. I'm not gonna go through the whole 
process, but like, let's just put that in bubble. Let's just see what that actually looks like inside of bubble, right? What I would do first is create the objects, right? So I'm doing an inventory of my app universe, essentially. So we've got a product and actually when I'm creating data types, I like to have them capitalized. So we've got products, we have got a cart type thing. We know that we have also an address. Okay, and then we might define the types of fields that we have, okay? So we already said that for our product, right, that's gonna have a name, okay? And that might be a text type field, right? It might also have a category, right? That's gonna help with searching. And in fact, a category is something that we don't have defined, but this is a good use case for option sets. And uh, if you're not familiar with option sets, um, just let me know in the comments and I'll make a separate video on option sets. In short, an option set is just a way of defining some data, some data that you can reference in your application, but it doesn't actually live in the database. It's stuff that is gonna be static, that's not gonna change, that's not going to be information that you're gonna be populating dynamically through the behavior of users and other workflows, right? You're just gonna define it up front, and then you're gonna be able to reference it throughout your application. So we might have a category option set, okay? And then we, we as sort of like the god, the creator of this application, we're gonna add in some options. So like we might have, televisions, okay? We might have sports equipment, right? You just, you'd populate this with all of the categories that you have in your database. And the nice thing is that now, when we go to define a category field here on the product thing, okay? We can actually reference that category option set that we just created. And maybe we want, we can even give it multiple categories by selecting that this field is a list, but in this case, we won't do that. Okay, obviously our product is gonna have a lot more details here, right? It's gonna have a price, but this is just to demonstrate like the basic principle. So we won't populate this entire object, okay? And then we've got a cart. So a cart, I think quite understandably, is gonna have a list of products in it. Okay, so we're gonna come down, we're gonna choose product, and we're gonna say that this field is a list. So whenever you're creating a relationship between two data types, okay, one thing to keep in mind is the direction of the relationship that you're creating. Okay, in this case, we've got, right, a user, okay, we've got a cart. Now, a user is only gonna have one cart at a time, so this can be pretty self-explanatory. Okay, and because only logged in users are gonna be able to create carts, i.e. there's always gonna be a user logged in when a cart is created, this creator field is automatically gonna be populated by that user. So we're gonna have the reverse connection as well. But I kind of skimmed over this list of products on a cart, okay? That's something a little bit different, right? We've got a cart and we've got products. Products, there's another product. It should just be a single product. There's another product, okay? And they are all living inside this cart's list of products, okay? Now, why do it this way? And why not have, you know, a product product and each product has a list of carts of which it is a part, right? So then it has a card over here, a card over here, a card over here, right? Why not do it that way? Right, in this case, what I'm thinking about is how do I keep the list as small as it needs to be, okay? It's unlikely that a cart is going to have thousands upon thousands of products in it, okay? Like in very likelihood, like a cart is gonna stay relatively small, you know, maybe 10 items at the most. Um, 
In this scenario, okay, if we linked a cart as a list living inside of the product, well, this list has the potential to get very, very large indeed, okay? Like all of the people that are buying, you know, this particular brand of basketball or iPhone or whatever, right? That list of carts that's gonna exist on that product is gonna get massive. There's gonna be a cart for each user that is buying an iPhone at that time. So that list could get potentially very, very, very large. And the problem with this approach is that because we are anchoring the relationship on these products rather than anchoring it on this cart is that when we're going to want to retrieve all of the products in a particular cart, okay, what we're going to have to do, right, is we're going to have to do a search, right, and I'll do this in, I'll do this in the app so you can see. Okay, we've got a product and we've got carts there and there's going to be a list of carts okay so every time that we want to find all of the products that belong to a particular cart right we're going to have to do a search for all of the products okay and then see that the carts field contains some cart object, right? Like this might be like the user's current cart or something like that. So we're searching through the entire database of products, right? Which could be, you know, millions of items just to pull out a few entries that belong to the current user. So it's a massively inefficient way of searching, okay? We wanna be searching through the smallest list that we possibly can. That's why this approach is much better because we've already got the current user, okay, who's like accessible all the time, right? Like if you just go into the application, if I clear this, like I can grab the current users whatever, okay? And if I define a field here on the user called a cart, Well, now all I have to do is I have to grab the current user's cart and then just grab all of the products in that cart, which is going to be a relatively small list. Okay, so we're going from the current user, grabbing their cart, and then retrieving the list of products living in that cart. So it's a relatively small list that we're searching through, way more efficient in terms of the time that our application needs in order to retrieve those items from the database. Now, the one disclaimer that I'm going to make to this is that if this list of things on an object has the potential to be like infinite, right? Like if we were thinking like we've got a user and a user has like messages, right? Like this is like a chat app, like Facebook Messenger or something. I'm saying messages. This is, these are all messages, right? Okay, this list could potentially go on forever, okay? In this case, it's actually better, instead of having a list of messages living on the user, you wanna just have on each message a field pointing to the user, okay? So you'll actually do a search through the whole database and then pull out all of the messages that are connected to a particular user. That's actually more efficient in terms of the amount of time that it takes to do that search than grabbing a list of things on a particular user, on a particular thing and pulling them out if that list is really large. And that's something that Bubble themselves have pointed out in their documentation. I'll include a link below for you to look at that yourself. Okay, the last thing in our database here was this address thing, okay? And now we're faced with a similar dilemma, right? Like we've got an address, we've got a user, okay? We know that there's gonna be multiple addresses connected to the same user. Right, do we have a list of addresses living on the user? Or
does each address point independently to the user, okay? So you always gotta think about this in terms of like, where are you anchoring the search to? You wanna anchor it to the place where there's like minimal searching going on. In this case, right, this list is gonna be relatively short, in which case it's okay and it's actually preferable for us to have a list of address addresses living on the user, okay? That's gonna be faster, okay, by, you know, a minuscule amount, but nonetheless, it's a good practice to get into because when your app scales, right, when you're gonna have many, many users, many, many objects in your database, these kind of performance optimizations are gonna be really important, okay? So it's better to have this, what we would call a one-to-many connection when the list of many things, right, this, these addresses here is gonna be relatively short. Okay, if that list was going to be really, really long, like if we'd imagine that a user could have thousands of addresses, okay, then it would be better for us to have a field user living on the address. So we're pointing from the address to the user, okay? But in our case, we know that you know, a user's gonna have a minimal amount of addresses, probably gonna be in the single digits. So this one-to-many connection is okay. All right, so those are some things to keep in mind when you are configuring your database. Really important step that you should be doing at the start of your build. Of course, you can tweak and optimize your database as you go along, but you wanna get that foundation right from the beginning. So, hope that was helpful. I plan to be making a lot more videos like this, so if there's particular topics that you'd like me to cover, let me know in the old comments below. See you later.